Now on Denver 7 News at 4, Colorado taxpayers are about to get a big refund. Why the state is sending everyone checks for hundreds of dollars. The grief often never goes away for the loved ones of shooting victims. But now researchers and survivors are finding mindfulness training could be part of a way to find peace. And modular home construction is booming right now amid a growing national housing shortage. How it could be a way to save both time and money. And crews are working to fix a broken water main that flooded a street in several homes in Denver. Why it could take weeks to clean up the damage. Thank you for joining us tonight for Denver 7 News at 4. I'm Jacqueline Allen. We've got some good news to start about money in your pocket. All taxpaying Coloradans will get a $400 check in the mail by August. This refund's coming because the state collected more, more tax dollars than it's legally allowed to spend. And rules in our state taxpayer bill of rights say the state cannot just hold on to that extra money. So Governor Polis says he is working to get those checks in the mail as fast as possible because people need relief now. Instead of government sitting on the money, we want to make sure we get it back to people and empower Coloradans to invest this Colorado dividend in their own families, in their communities. And Republicans are criticizing Democrats, as you heard, for taking credit for that tax refund. They say Democrats have opposed Tabor, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, in the past, and they are now highlighting the returns as a success. Those checks will start showing up in either August or September. Also today, Governor Polis signed the bill that establishes our state's universal preschool program. Starting next year, Colorado families will have access to 10 hours of free preschool every week. The bill also creates the new Department of Early Childhood, which will focus on improving education for young children here. State leaders say Colorado families who take advantage of the free preschool will save on average $4,300 per year. The Denver City Council will take up two major proposals tonight. The first is about safer sidewalks and public spaces. This one would provide $73 million to make the city more accessible for people with disabilities. If it's passed, parking areas, sidewalks, and other city properties would receive upgrades to become compliant with the American with Disabilities Act. More than half a dozen cities across the country have been taken to court over poorly maintained curb ramps and sidewalks. Last month, Julie Jennings, who uses a wheelchair, talked to us and she says Denver is no different. Even in my apartment building, which is only two years old, some of the, uh, most of the common spaces, the doors are just too heavy for me to pull open. I can't use those common spaces, even though I pay the same rent as everyone else. And last time sidewalk inspections were done, city planners estimated it would take up to 50 years to repair every crumbling sidewalk, curb, and crosswalk in Denver. In Denver's Berkeley neighborhood, water crews are still working to fix a water main break that happened over the weekend and damaged several homes. The street has finally been drained, but it was not easy. Crews were not able to stop the flow of water for nearly four hours after the break. Look at this mess. They had to wait several more hours for the water to fully drain before starting repairs. The Denver Post is reporting that the pipe was installed about 100 years ago, and that age could be a factor in the break. Denver Water says it's working with homeowners to take care of everything, but that the process will take several weeks. A New York judge is holding former President Donald Trump in civil contempt. This comes after the New York Attorney General's office said he did not comply with a subpoena for documents related to the investigation of the Trump Organization for fraud. The judge says Donald Trump's attorneys made no attempt to search for the documents. As a result, the former president will be fined $10,000 a day until he complies. Twitter announced today that the company has been sold to Elon Musk for about $44 billion, billion with a B. Now, less than a month ago, the Tesla and SpaceX CEO revealed that he bought a 9% stake in the company. This deal will put the world's richest man in charge of one of the world's most influential social media platforms. In a tweet, Musk says he hopes to make several changes to Twitter to help bolster free speech. Top U.S. leaders are reassuring Ukraine today that the U.S. is fully committed to helping them push Russia out. The Secretary of State and Defense Secretary met with Ukraine's president in Ukraine. 
They say the U.S. has approved another $300 million in foreign military aid and a $165 million sale of ammunition. Now, up to 100,000 Ukrainian refugees will soon be welcomed to the U.S. The process starts today for any American interested in sponsoring one of those refugees. It's an incredibly streamlined process for providing a pathway to safety. We're excited about its potential to demonstrate possibility for tapping into Americans' willingness to play this type of welcoming role and therefore to be able to expand programming of this type and opportunities for this kind of access to safety to additional people fleeing Ukraine, but also other populations in need. So if you're hearing this and you're interested, here's how it works. A sponsor will help a Ukrainian refugee find safe housing and make sure their other basic needs are met. It may be a Ukrainian American who has a relative that they wanna to bring to the United States, but any American can become a sponsor. Organizations looking for potential sponsors can connect you so you can start the application process. It includes security and background checks on both the sponsor and the refugee. There are plenty of other ways to help if you can't make this type of commitment, and that includes donating extra airline miles that you may have, opening up a room in your home temporarily through airbnb.org, or donating to help cover housing costs. But just making a refugee feel welcome in your community could have a huge impact too. Having a friend and a guide who's just, you know, taking you through the grocery store, telling you the best places, you know, the best parks in your neighborhood for your kids to play in, or you know, sharing a meal with you once a week and making you feel included and part of the community and welcomed is so important. She's the CEO of the nonprofit Welcome.us. They're coordinating the effort to help Ukrainian refugees coming to the United States. And they also coordinated help for the nearly 100,000 Afghan refugees who arrived in the fall. And she says those refugees still need our help too. They arrived in the middle of a major housing crisis. So in many high impact cities, um, they're still in temporary housing and they're still in hotels and other temporary accommodations. And you really can't rebuild your life until you're in your home and your kids can register at the local school and you can find a job that's close to where you live. Now, she says close to 20,000 Afghans in the United States still have significant housing needs. You can find ways to help both Afghan and Ukrainian refugees and information about sponsorship on the website, welcome.us. Well, not turning your camera on for a video meeting if you're working from home may not be a good look to your boss. That is at least what a new survey is saying. We're talking to a career expert who says this shouldn't make you feel pressured to return to the office. And a massive fire tears through a Colorado cattle ranch and animal sanctuary. Up next, the extent of the damage and how state leaders are responding.